Dirty diaper your baby the soft fresh way Dirty diaper your baby today All of the flowers were wilted They're like the diva of the flower world Cuz I'm a, I'm a florophile You're yeah. flo you're a what? I'm a florophile Everybody welcome to the show This is a show about failure? I mean not completely failure you're like growing up, like you tell your mom, like, oh, I'm a failure. She's like, no, honey, you just failed at something. That's what this is about, is having a big idea, running with it, and falling down every once in a while. Uh, f***ing up every once in a while, because that's what we do when we have an idea that's worth pursuing. Tonight on the show, we've got Sarah from The Stemmery. She has a flower subscription service. So you can keep sending flowers to the person you need to keep sending flowers to. Um, I don't know exactly how that works. Maybe because I don't have somebody. Well, I probably got plenty of people I should keep sending flowers to, uh, to be honest. So I'm hoping that uh, Sarah can help me out with that. Let's go. Everybody, welcome to the show. As I mentioned earlier, I've got Sarah here from the Stemmery. I don't know why I want to say Steamery and everything, but Stemmery. Yeah. It's Steamery a, is like a like a dry cleaner or something. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a dry cleaner. Not a dry cleaner. The Stemmery flowers. Flowers. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, about your business. Yeah. So we're a flower delivery subscription service. So we bring flowers to your home or office or business every week, every other week, or once a month. So it's pretty simple. Like yeah. you don't have to make a lot of decisions. You just tell us when you want them delivered and pick a size. Like this is, this is kind of a small version of our medium size because they yeah. need to fit on this table. Yeah. But like we have three three different tiers. So the levels. medium size is actually. It's just than it's this. like it's like less condensed than this. We just use seasonal flowers and make different arrangements each week, and it's always a surprise and fun treat for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> a treat for yourself. Yeah. Wait, is there anybody that sends flowers to themselves? Yes, so many people. What? <laughs> yes, no, like that's, that's not the true. majority of our. Really? customers yes they send flowers to themselves yeah totally i did not think that I mean, it's at all like you get you get a massage for yourself like you treat yourself to other things so treat yourself to flowers why not I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how'd you get started doing this oh man i just like spent years working random office admin jobs and never like being satisfied with that yeah um and I would come home and like make handmade greeting cards to sell on Etsy. Really? Like, or for a while I was like making like lunch bags and computer sleeves and trying to sell those online and like doing pop-ups around you, town. Were you like, uh, like sewing them yourself yeah. and putting them together? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So it was like all this super random stuff that I just like get it in my head like, oh, I could do this. Yeah. And, um, and you know, like I'd sell some stuff here and there, but it was never like a success by any yeah. means. And I would also get super bored. Like, okay, I've made enough of the greeting card. Like I've made like a hundred of these. And they're now. stacked up. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you remember do you remember your first sale on Etsy? I don't know if I remember my first one, but I remember there was this one Christmas where I was like making Christmas cards. Yeah. And something happened in like the Etsy algorithms where all of a sudden my shop was getting featured on like the front page or something. What? And I got like all of these orders and I was like, I'm not prepared to make this many Christmas cards. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like staying up late every night just like. So did you not have like tape. the set like on there of like the hey we're sold out or hey whatever? You were just like, yeah. No, I was just like, I've always been like, I can't say no, like to to like orders like people are sending pay me money like yeah. i have to figure out a way to make it work and yeah. it was never like i can't do it it was just like a lot more than i ever expected and i just got like really really bored with it eventually and yeah. then all of a sudden like somebody asked me to do flowers for a wedding like it was kind of like you're creative yeah. we bought all these flowers put them together in bouquets had for you, us had you ever done it before no like wait, never. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Usually when somebody like is involved in a wedding, yeah. it's like I need people to seriously know what they're doing. Right. Because you're gonna like ruin my day. And I recommend right? like, that. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> except for with me, because no, I'm brilliant. I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't say that 
um, that was my best work ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, because now but, you probably know more, right? right? I know what I'm doing now. I didn't then. I get like one of these people was my sister, so I can totally like laugh. She's totally like she bought she's flowers. Cool with she's it, right? cool. She's yeah. cool. But like she bought flowers at like Trader Joe's or something, and then she was like, "I just thought you could put these together for me," and I was like. All right, I'm doing it. <laughs> you're a really good sister. Like I love that there's the assumptive clothes. Yeah. Like you're creative. Yeah. Put these together for yeah. me. So, but as much as they weren't like by any means really great bouquets or anything, I had so much fun doing it. Yeah. And I was like, this is something I can see myself doing oh, wow. for like a long time and not getting tired of it and just yeah. really loving it. And it's true because like each arrangement I make, they're always different. It's not like I'm sitting and like cutting a pattern. Sure. Like making the same thing over yeah. and over again. So it's just like a fun, creative experience every day. Yeah. And it's also, I love that it's it's nature. Quick question, do you still do some of the other types of things too? Like no. Any no. of that, cause you're just too busy. Yeah, and it's like, I really did get tired of it. So, yeah. and once you find the thing that's like fulfilling you and yeah. you're like happy with that, like this yeah. is, I mean, since I've been doing flowers, it's like the first time that I've ever not been doing something else, you know, yeah. like I'm just happy doing and it. And you love doing it. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. What is What has been um, probably the biggest challenge just getting started uh, with doing flowers? I mean, I think that, and this is something I still don't like doing, but like planning, like <laughs> on it, like well, planning this is flowers. So great. You're like, I have a business, yeah. and the only thing I don't like doing Be is planning. <laughs> because like I, I think that part of being creative is that you're visual and you like to like Absolutely. look at things and pick things yeah. out, and like especially if it's like that, like for Valentine's Day coming up, right? Yeah. Like I have to, um, like guess how many people are gonna order stuff yeah. and like then calculate how many flowers of each type of flower I'm gonna need. Right. And like that's math and like <laughs> guessing and I'm like that is my least favorite. That's like the biggest learning curve and my least favorite part yeah. of doing flowers. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Do you buy flowers a lot, Jack? You give out flowers? You buy flowers for yourself? I uh, don't buy flowers for myself. <laughs> You could. I you make, could. I you make, could. A, Here's I make my a lot of edibles of flowers. Edible nice. flowers. Yes. Flowers. I'm a, I'm a florophil. You're, yeah. fl you're a what? I'm a florophil. Wait, is that a real word? Yes, it is a very real word. Is that like someone who Me loves and my flowers? ilk, we do things with Florophil? flowers. I need to know this Wait, word. is that somebody that loves flowers or eats yeah. flowers or that loves, loves flowers? flowers, which wow. might include eating. I mean, gustation Flor is a part of the I guess I'm a florophil too. All right, Jack, This tell is us. like a whole like I know. arrangement, drink arrangement. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your drink is called the flower press? Yes. Okay. It oh, is yes, uh, an amalgam of a florality. <laughs> Made by a botanicality florophile. and uh, yes, made by a florophil. <laughs> you want to give it about uh, three stirs, a press, Presbyterian, um, old school drink, family of Ricky's and Collins. Press usually has equal parts uh, ginger ale and tonic. Um, in this case, we have pink ginger ginger beer and a pink grapefruit tonic for the fill on the press side of that. We have big gin on the bottom with a little bit of my very special in-house Apertivo, which has terpenes among other things. Uh, staff of Joshua Flower Cordial. It's one of the only uh, blooming trees that blooms twice a year, once in spring and once in winter. And then uh, Italicus Bergamot Liqueur. Yeah, a little bit of Bergamot tincture spritzed on top too because I like Bergamot I and strawberry bitters what? made by moi. Yeah. I mean, this sounds like the fanciest drink I've ever had. You didn't say citrus. Had. Said bergamot. I'm I know so it is the fanciest drink. Are you are you ready to try it? I am so ready to okay, try go. it. All right, you ready? How do you uh, how you say cheers? You use a certain word. You say salute. Cheer? Salute. Like the right. Italians, because it's salute. my favorite place to drink. Is it in Italy? It's in Italy. Mm. They have the best wine. So, wow, this is delicious. Glad you like. Mm. Yeah. Like dangerously good. Dangerously. Mm. It's pretty boozy. <laughs> do you do any bouquets that are just based off of 
like the region right totally. here. Totally. That's stuff like that. my favorite. I mean, that's been like a really important part of the Simmery since we started. Yeah. This isn't like all local by any means because it's the winter and everything is dead. But pretty much for like nine or eight or nine months out of the year, yeah. I get all of our flowers from the Seattle Wholesale Growers Market Cooperative, which is this awesome group of farmers who came together and they're like, we want to like provide a place that everybody can buy like local flowers. Oh, wow. And is it just flowers? It's flowers and foliage like and foliage. anything that they yeah. grow. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's, I mean, it's a pretty unique resource that a lot of most places in the country don't have. Yeah. You went down a route where, again, you've got to keep up. Like you learned with Etsy. <laughs> like, I like that you were like, well, kids say no. Like, yeah. if they order it, I'm going to make it and yeah. give it to them. And now you're in a situation where it's it's kind of the same because the subscription it means is. you know you're going to have to ship something every, you said every week, every two weeks, yeah, every Yeah, we month? do twice a week. Um, our delivery days are twice a week. And then like our subscribers have different, like some of them are weekly, some are every other week, yeah. and some are monthly. Yeah, but it is, I do have to say no a lot. Um, oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. as a floral designer, it is kind of like assumed that I do weddings. And I do do some weddings, Yeah. but I am very limited on like how many weddings I can yeah. take because So not this on is, your website, it probably doesn't right, say, Right, it's hey, not we on our weddings. website. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like if somebody, is like, we really like what you do. Like, would you be willing to consider? Then I will talk to them and if I can make it yeah. work. And I kind of like prefer to do smaller weddings just because yeah. it's a lot more manageable. Yeah. But yeah, like I think that starting this, so I like came up with the subscription model because I wanted something that was scalable that I could grow and potentially like could run maybe one day without my everyday involvement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I was like, how can I do flowers and it not just be like tied to me yeah, being yeah, there yeah, doing yeah. this thing every day and also be like a year round business? Cause I'm not saying that there's no winter weddings, but there's a lot less. So like yeah. there's very clearly like a wedding season and then an off season. How's it going? Like, do you see sort of like a future where you're gonna be like living in Cape Town and just like, all right, kiddos, have fun running my business. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I would say that's the goal. Like, I love doing floral design, so it's not yeah. like, it's not like I want to be like totally removed from it. Like, I'd yeah. love to be able to just be like, I'm going to do some arrangements today. And I think that's like a big part of my vision from the beginning yeah. was like, okay, how can I get this to the point that I have like freedom and flexibility and can eventually like pull away from different parts. And I still, I mean, I work every day. Like, I mean, I try to take weekends, but it's still very involved like yeah. on a daily basis, but I can travel because I hired people. And like, I think there's this like tension where you're like, I don't want to spend the money on that. But yeah. if I don't, then I can never leave. <laughs> yeah. And so I think there was a lot of decisions like, hey, like sure, I'm going to sacrifice a little bit for this, but I'm going to hire some people early on who can do floral design, who can do deliveries who can like take on extra work if I want to leave town for a week or two. Yeah. Like, and they're a wonderful and have a great team. Can't talk highly enough about them. And <laughs> yeah. I'm really grateful for that. Where did you have like uh, uh, missteps or things that you thought you knew what it was going to be like and then it wasn't like, okay, listen, where did you f up? Like, yeah. where were you like, yeah. uh, I got this wrong. Oh my gosh. Like there's so many, I think one of the earliest ones was just like learning about flowers. And I remember this one time that there's these like big dahlias, they're called cafe au lait dahlias. And what yeah, do they look like? They're they like big and like lots of layers of petals that kind of cut like ray out from the center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're beautiful color, kind of like blushy. Um, and I just like, when my first year I was doing arrangements and they like showed up at the market, I was like, oh man, gotta use these. And I put them in all my arrangements. And the next day I came into the studio and all of the flowers were wilted. And I was like, oh my God. What, <laughs> and, like that quick? So it turns out they're like the diva of the flower world. And I had no idea. And they just have like. By the way, I love that you said <laughs> diva of the flower world. They are. And they're just like hanging out. Yeah. You can't plan on them for anything, much less. Like when I send out subscriptions, I want them to last for people for at least five to seven days. Yeah. So it's not like it's just like they show up and need to look good that day. It's like they need to look good for almost a week. Cafe au lait. Yeah. So I never ever use them anymore, but I had no idea. And so then 
like that morning with all my subscriptions, I'm like going down to the flower market, like buying different flowers and like trying to put them all in. And it was just like, I had no idea. So do, do unfortunately you, <laughs> I had to learn from my own mistakes and not other people. Well, I think that that's, uh, well, the truth is that's probably what everybody does, mm -hmm. starting a small business or becoming an entrepreneur. Like, yeah. that's probably the best and easiest way to learn about it. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people, myself included, they probably spend too much time researching or reading stuff because then yeah. they don't do it. Yeah. Right? Like it's like, uh, oh, let me figure out how to write a business plan. Oh, let yeah. me figure out how to market my business. Oh, let me figure right. out what the decoration should be in my tortilla shop. Right? Instead yeah. of just do it. Uh, totally. And then you find out. And right? then you like, and you learn. And I mean, I'll come across stuff and I, I have to research it. I have to figure out how to do it. But I just I tend to be more like as I go like oh wait I can't I can't do this what do I do <laughs> like I told somebody I'd build this huge installation and I have no idea what I'm doing oh, like, no. I mean I'll pretty much always say that I can do something that somebody wants like if I do do a wedding or right. like right. an installation for a business or something because I know I can figure it out but like yeah like I remember this one business like they wanted um, their logo and flowers on their wall what? for like a grand opening. And I was like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and You're then like, I was like, uh... Abs absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to use cafe au lait. Yeah. What do you think is inside? Like, did you grow up around entrepreneurs? Did you grow up around people that were taking these types of risks to figure out what it is that they wanted to do? Yeah, for, for sure. Living? I yeah. mean, maybe not to the same extent. Like, like, neither of my parents started a business per se, but yeah. like, both of them are very entrepreneurial. Like my mom teaches piano, like she's done that her whole life. And yeah. so she's always been kind of carving her own place in the world. And yeah. like, and I think, I remember as a kid, like she would always be making and selling stuff. Like back in the nineties when like, um, like sweatpants suits were really popular. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> like I remember as a kid, my mom would make these like cotton sweatsuits and she'd use puff paint and like design like themed sweat suits like with like piano no or like music notes is all this, over them or is this, like <laughs> is this a thing was this really a thing in the I 90s just, that i missed it, it? this sounds glorious my like, dad wrote music and he's actually a really great songwriter but he did a lot of jingles so like back in the 90s again when jingles no were like all the rage way. i remember specifically this one he wrote for this diaper service <laughs> that like they would pick up your cloth diapers and clean them and bring them back to you this is so good. Yeah. So uh, he also what, wrote a. Wait, he, do you like that's right. Oh my if gosh, you remember I can't. it. You're like, <laughs> I remember. I do. I remember jingle. the whole thing. It's the only one that I remember that. Wait, you do <laughs> actually remember the words? All right, okay. hold on. Okay. I'm gonna sit. And I'm ready to uh, receive the jingle about. Well, how does it go? I'm in, I'm a little like nervous because I'm not a singer. So this uh, that's no okay. promises here. I'll sing it back to you okay. if it's easy goes the service is called Dighty Diapers. Okay. <laughs> Dighty diaper your baby the soft fresh way. Dighty diaper your baby today. Dighty diapers the one for your little one. Dighty diaper your baby today. That's amazing. <laughs> oh. I think I think I think we're good forever now. <laughs> That's, the best we're ever gonna get. That's it. Like I think we peak like Daddy diaper your I feel baby like today. I need to also give my dad credit that he then went on to actually start a business like he didn't just do the jingle thing, no but, like but the jingle thing is the most fun yeah he, he, he failed at all other things <laughs> <laughs> he, reached his, he reached his peak doing jingles but then he went on and, and did a separate business yeah so he actually like worked for companies like most of my life growing up until I was a teenager and then he started a business doing like um, contractor like he was a contractor and he built like additions onto people's homes and stuff oh like wow that. yeah but it's interesting because you follow a similar path mm -hmm. in like you knew you were going to make things and yeah. now now the thing you're making is a business not just flower arrangements right, right? i wouldn't be surprised if we see something completely different like yeah. from you in the next five years, the next 10 years, like. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, yeah. I feel really happy with this business and like, but it would be really cool if it if it takes off and it's like able to be on its own and I have the chance to do something else in the future. We'll see, who yeah. knows, who knows. <laughs> what, do you, what do you see What do you see next for the, the business itself? I mean, I think that I'm constantly looking for 
like how to scale. Yeah. So, and I think that there's always that kind of like tug and pull a little bit because like we'll get more subscriptions and I'll be kind of stretched thin and like my team will too, but like we're not quite at the point where we can hire somebody else, you yeah, know? Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah, like yeah. that kind of back and forth um, a little bit. So right now, just figuring out like how to continue making connections in this area and like growing the business in Seattle. Yeah. But eventually, like I'd love to expand. Yeah. Um, and who knows, maybe even have other locations. Yeah. Like Any uh, <laughs> last parting words of wisdom to the masses or to the guy that's still afraid to like become a freelance anything? I mean, if you, if you love it and your heart's in it, I think you're just gonna do you're gonna do such a better job than you're doing it, something that you don't feel that way about. So yeah. go for it. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for being on the show yeah. so much. All right, what, uh, what was the Italian Salute one? Day. Like? Salute day. Yeah. Yeah, awesome, <laughs> salute day. Salute day. Sarah, thanks for being on the show. That was a blast. Uh, thank you for the song that I will never, ever, ever forget. And if you like what you saw, then subscribe, ring the bells, click on the stuff that's around my face right now. And if you have your own F up, your own f up, go to fups.com. We would love to have you on the show.